I quit YouTube for over a year because I completely burned myself out trying to do too much too fast. This is the workflow that I developed to prevent that from happening ever again. Now I'm putting out consistent weekly content with way less stress and actually getting better results. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna walk you through my complete AI workflow for making YouTube videos and building an actual video using this exact process so you can watch it happen in real time. By the end, you'll have a system that you can just copy that creates good enough content consistently while you gradually improve over time because AI handles all the grunt work and you can focus on what makes you unique. The tool that I'm about to show you makes this workflow incredibly streamlined. It gets your voice better and can be more easily trained with expert knowledge so you get a much better output compared to other AI. But you can absolutely do this workflow for free with other AI tools. And that's how I did it until I was able to reinvest my channel earnings. Let me guess, you want more views on your videos. We all do, but here's the brutal truth that I learned after being completely burnt out. Trying to make every video perfect will kill your channel faster than bad content ever will. I used to be that creator spending weeks on a single video, research for days, write and rewrite scripts, endlessly obsess over every single frame. I didn't know that you could burn out in as quick as 10 videos. I burnt out so bad, I quit for over a year. That's when I was finally able to internalize something counterintuitive. The magic happens when you can stick with it long enough to grow, not when you create the perfect video. I'm a recovering perfectionist. Here's my new philosophy. Make content that's good enough. Content that doesn't immediately scream amateur. Content that belongs next to the best videos on the platform. But that's it. Do that, then you have all the time in the world to practice and get incrementally better, but only if you don't burn out first. The biggest leverage move isn't perfect videos. It's posting consistently over time. That's the golden key to the algorithm. It loves consistency over time. You can't rush growth. So this system exists to help you sustain it without losing your mind. The tool that I use is called Poppy AI. I have a referral link in the description if you wanna support me. Think of it like a digital whiteboard that connects different pieces of media to an AI chat window. And if you're a visual learner like me, this is one of a kind. Now, before we dive in, I know some of you might be thinking, I don't want AI to replace me as a creator. Neither do I. This tool and this workflow doesn't replace you. It amplifies you. AI handles the grunt work so you can focus on the creative decisions, your unique perspective, and what makes your content yours. You set it up once and it's always there when you come back. You can tweak your process, reorganize things, iterate on your workflow. And honestly, just having everything in one place instead of juggling 15 different browser tabs saves me a ton of time every single video. You don't need this tool though. The workflow I'm about to show you works with any AI, but this makes it faster and more organized. And a quick note, this video is sponsored by Poppy AI, but everything I'm showing you is genuinely my workflow that I use every single week. Let me give you a quick tutorial on how this actually works. It's really intuitive. On the left side of your screen, you've got all of your options. To get started, all you need is a chat window. If you've ever used AI before, this will look familiar. This is where you ask your questions and where all of your results will show up. You can select different AI models down here at the bottom. I'd suggest Claude for creative writing. It's what I use for everything. For example, I can ask Poppy, what are some good video topics for small YouTubers who feel stuck and want more views? It'll give me a response and I'm off to the races. But AI is so much more powerful than that. And that's where this tool comes in. AI is only as good as the guardrails that you give it. The more context you give it, the more curated the response will be that it gives back. I can't trust AI to give me a quality response unless I tell it what a good response looks like to me. So with Poppy, I can link a text document and in here I'll paste my audience analysis that I made. I'm actually working on a video that'll show you how you can make one of these for you and your audience. It'll be linked in the description of this video after I post it in a couple weeks. Subscribe so you don't miss it. With this analysis, I get an even better, more informed response. And you can go further, the sky's the limit. You can paste links to YouTube videos and it'll use those transcripts for context. You can give it Google Docs, websites, podcasts, just about anything. Then you organize things by putting them into groups and it's just as simple as dragging things around on your screen. You can connect and disconnect things at will. Then all you have to do is talk to Poppy. Press the microphone symbol and talk to Poppy like it's a friend or an expert, or if you prefer, you can just type. And that's it. That's everything you need to make videos super easy. You've seen my videos, this is how I do it. Let me walk you through my complete process step-by-step step, though, from ideation to titles, thumbnails, hooks, retention, the works. I'll show you exactly how I make a video using Poppy from start to finish, then I'll upload it to the channel so you can see how the completed project looks. Now, fair warning, we're gonna go through six detailed steps here, but I promise there's some really valuable stuff coming after we finish the workflow, including an honest breakdown of the cost and some of the other cool possibilities with the tool. So stick with me. Everything starts with the right idea. Sometimes I'm inspired by something I watched. Sometimes it's based on something that performed well in my community tab or newsletter. My last video was based on my best performing community posts and it's currently my best performing video so far. Most of the time though, I just used vidIQ's outlier search tool. 
This finds videos that performed way better than a channel's normal numbers. I look for content that's blown up and then I ask, how can I make my own version of this? Let me show you exactly how I did this with our example video. First, I asked Poppy to brainstorm ideas that would work well for my audience. I gave it my audience analysis and some excellent videos on titles from Nate, Aprilin, Jay, and Jake, and then started having a conversation about what might work best. Then I added more context by uploading my list of title frameworks. This Google sheet, link in the description, has over 700 proven title frameworks, basically title blueprints that can be adapted to any niche. They're based on proven titles across YouTube over several years. So for example, a video titled 12 Brutal Truths About Women That Men Learn Too Late becomes 12 Brutal Truths About Entity That Audience Learn Too Late. I made a whole video about this process. You can watch it after this one next if you're interested. I gave Poppy this list of 700 plus frameworks as guardrails to guarantee a good enough starting point. For me, ideas and titles are interconnected. I think of ideas in title form, which is why I provide this contents during ideation. Don't settle on the first idea that sounds decent. Find something that genuinely excites you, because if you're not excited, then your audience won't be either. Next is nailing the title. And this is where most people mess up. They write the script or film first, then they try to figure out the title afterwards. That's backwards. Everything about your video is based on the title. Everything I do after this point is based on the title that I choose here. Over time, I narrowed things down by giving Poppy my previous videos so that I didn't repeat recent topics. As it generated good ideas worth considering, I then took them to vidIQ to use the outlier search feature. This step is crucial. I need to validate any idea that I run with. So I look for others who've succeeded with the topic. What do their thumbnails look like? What keywords do they use? Then I went back and forth between Poppy and vidIQ until I landed on something that felt right. Initially, I settled on stop uploading. These three mistakes are killing your views under 1K creators. It was based on other outlier videos in my niche, but the more I thought about it, the less it felt right for my audience. In the past, my mistake videos haven't performed super well. So I asked Poppy to circle back to my audience analysis and reframe the content. And I landed on the real reason small creators get no views. It's not what you think, which my gut says will perform much better. In my title section on Poppy, I have those creator videos about great titles, plus my audience analysis and title frameworks all connected to one chat. This way I get the best possible title based on what actually works for my specific audience. I never move forward until I have a title that I'm confident in that has been validated by other successful videos on the platform. After titles comes the thumbnail. The thumbnail needs to work in perfect sync with the title. They're a one-two punch to build curiosity. While dialing in the idea and title, I was also hunting for a good thumbnail concept to pair with it. I used Poppy by giving it some really great videos on what makes a great thumbnails, this time from Finzar, Aprilin, and Callaway. For my channel, curiosity building text that sounds almost contradictory or counterintuitive works really well. And using Poppy, I landed on the game has changed. With that much text, there won't be much room for much else. And I'm not entirely sure how I would reinforce this idea visually anyway. So I'll just stick with what works and take a photo of myself with a serious or stern look with the big bold text, the game has changed. If possible, I'll fit the YouTube logo in so at a glance anyone seeing it will realize that I'm talking about how YouTube has changed. I make all my thumbnails by taking stills from a quick video that I film after recording the actual video and then editing them in Photoshop. Canva also works if you want something even simpler, and you can also do a photo shoot with tons of different expressions to save time. If this video were more complicated, I'd do a mock-up of the thumbnail in Photoshop before writing the script to make sure that the whole concept works and that it doesn't look terrible. But after making hundreds of thumbnails, I can visualize how this one will turn out. There's no point in committing to a video if the packaging won't work. If they don't click, they don't watch. Now that I have an idea, title, and thumbnail creating a curiosity gap, there are a million different ways that I could deliver on that promise. Take my example video, for example. I could have made it that list of three mistakes that small creators make, or maybe I could have just focused on the algorithm changes or used a case study format. The content promise is the same, but the lens through which I present it makes all the difference. This is where the angle becomes crucial, how you frame and present your content idea to make it uniquely yours. And this is exactly where AI really starts to shine. For my example video, I just started brain dumping everything I could think about on the subject, points that I wanted to make, anecdotes, observations, experience, anything relevant to the topic. Then I linked my script blueprint to Poppy, also in the description, and asked it to explore the idea using that document and my notes. I also connected an excellent video from Jay and George about script structure to give it even more context on what makes a compelling narrative. This is where the magic happens. It suggested several potential angles the video could take. It recommended one that it thought was best, and then it asked for my input. The angle that it chose was the hidden game angle, 
which was perfect because it had strong emotional validation, positioned me as an insider who cracked the code, allowed me to weave in insights about the algorithm and created curiosity about what the new game actually is. I agreed, so it moved on to the next parts of the blueprint. It looked at the title and thumbnail promises and then built the video's content around the expectations you'd have when seeing them. It mapped out the viewer persona, explored different talking points based on my notes, came up with video sections, considered the best ways to retain attention through signposts and mini payoffs, mapped out the emotional journey through each section, found good insights and tension moments, and capped it all off with a call to action to watch something else next. This is the secret to all of my videos, and you can do it too with the documents that I put in the description. All you have to do is sign up for my newsletter or take my quiz, and I'll send you everything that I use in this video and more. And if you don't want weekly emails about growing on YouTube, you can unsubscribe right after. No hard feelings. This whole process saves so much time and effort. It's something I've tweaked and refined over time. I actually updated the script blueprint document recently, so if you have the old one, there's a link to the updated version in the description. From here, I asked it to take everything it just developed and write a rough draft script. The first result was pretty short and concise, so I asked it to expand in each section and then prompt me if it needed more information. This is where we pause and take a step away from the AI part of this workflow. If you didn't watch my video about my stance on AI, here's the summary. Making YouTube videos, content creation in general, is a mix of science and art. There is a formula to things, but there's also your craft. AI is a wonderful tool, but it should stay exclusively on the science side, in my opinion. It can help you shortcut the process, but it shouldn't replace you in the process. YouTube is fundamentally a transfer of emotion. It's about being relatable and authentic, human. The only way you survive making content long enough for this to become something meaningful is if you genuinely enjoy making content. I can't imagine you'll last long if you use AI to replace yourself in the process. But to reach your goals faster, to help you by doing all the grunt work, absolutely. You'd be silly not to at least consider it. Okay, let me get off my soapbox now. All that to say, this is where you make sure this is your video. Go through and intentionally rewrite as much as you can so that it sounds like you. Your words, mannerisms, quirks, turn of phrases, intentionally remove a lot of the polish, make it yours. So that's what I did. I took this rough draft and I pulled it into Google Docs and I spent time rewriting it, reading it aloud and making sure it worked properly to get a sense of the video length. Then I walked away and I came back the next day with fresh eyes to make even more changes. After that, we have the final steps in this workflow. I wanted to improve the hook. So I gave Poppy my hook formula worksheet, link below, and had it suggest a better hook for the video. This ensures that it would spark your interest and signal the video's value, set expectations, build anticipation, and explain why I'm the person to tell you about this. And you're probably wondering why I didn't start with a hook. I needed to know the angle first because the hook has to set up everything that follows. The hook's job is to immediately confirm that yes, you're gonna get exactly what I promised in the title and thumbnail, maybe even more. I also obsess over hooks to an uncomfortable degree. Like I said, recovering perfectionist. If I start there and get stuck, I lose my flow and everything after takes forever. So I write any decent hook that I can think of, finish the script, and then come back to perfect it. I have that five-step hook formula that I use. It gives the chat a template for creating a solid 20 to 30 second hook. The interest spark, the pattern interrupt, twist in value, credibility, and speed of value. I'll ask for multiple hook options and then cherry pick my favorite parts and then Frankenstein them together until I have something that I love. And then I took that rough draft and moved it to the final section where I gave Poppy my script enhancement document, again, in the description, and I asked it to punch up my script using it. What this does is it gets crystal clear on the video's value. What's the ultimate payoff? What's the logical flow? It improves the video's hook, adds or strengthens signposts and mini payoffs, improves emotional connection, pacing, and clarity, suggests visuals like B-roll or text overlays, and it improves the call to actions. After it's done all of this, you can take some or all of the parts that you like and then use them to improve your script further. Lastly, I have it suggest the best places to add other call to actions, like mentioning my upcoming 12 week program. The website for that should be up really soon, by the way. I'll put it in the link of all of my video descriptions in the coming weeks, if you're interested for that. Make sure you look for it. Or maybe the best place to ask for a like. Speaking of which, if you made it this far into this video, maybe it's worth a like, thank you. In my case, I also have an ad read to add near the front of the video. So I asked Poppy for help on placement and then how to transition into and out of the ad read. Okay, that's it for Poppy's role in making this video. Now it's time to rewrite and refine it again and again. You can see on screen what the script looks like at the end of this whole workflow process. I'm going to revisit it again with fresh eyes and do that as many times as I need to be happy with the final result. The goal is to make the script the best that it can be. This is about storytelling, video structure, keeping people watching. Throughout the video, signpost where we are, deliver on the mini payoffs and the promises, 
and guide viewers towards the ultimate transformation that I promised in the packaging. That's my complete workflow, the whole process from idea to finished script. I spent about six hours spread across four days to make that example video. That included all the research, validation, and multiple rounds of refinement. You've been watching me build this video throughout this entire process. It's called The Real Reason Small Creators Get No Views. It's not what you think. There's a good chance that you can watch that video right after this one to see the final result. I'll have it linked in the description. And if it's not posted yet, check back in a week or so. Poppy works on credits. The more you use it and the more complex the task, the more credits you use. I started this video with zero credits so you get a sense for how many it took to make this video. In my experience, it could take between 200 and 600, depending on how picky I am. The system has completely changed how I approach content creation. Instead of spending weeks on a single video and burning out, I consistently create good enough content that I can gradually improve on over time. Now let's talk about whether this is actually worth it for you. First, the price. It's $400 a year and you can't pay monthly. Ouch. For me, that made this a business decision. I reinvest everything I make back into the channel and this saves me more than enough time to pay for itself quickly. But if you're new and stuck in that valley of death where you're not making any money yet, this might be the wrong investment right now. You'd know better than I would. If you use the tool a lot like me, you might hit that 2000 credit monthly limit as well. If you do, the only option right now is to double your monthly credits for an additional $1,200. That's ridiculous for most small creators. Here's what I really think. If you're a visual learner like me and the digital whiteboard concept excites you, this could be amazing. If you already have a workflow and it's scattered all over multiple tabs and tools, consulting everything here is genuinely helpful. But if you're just starting out, and the price makes you uncomfortable, stick with Claude or ChatGPT. That's what I did until I was making money for my channel. When you sign up, they'll schedule a video call to walk you through everything, which is either really helpful or really annoying, depending on how you feel about that kind of thing. There's so much more that you can do with this setup. I have sections for video descriptions and chapter titles. I use it to create strategy guides for my coaching clients. I make world-class worksheets like the ones that I've mentioned throughout this video. And things can get even so much more intricate and specialized. I thought it might be cool to show you what's possible with this tool. Here's some clips from different workflows from other creators. I'm just starting to discover all the different ways that this thing can help me. And I've seen some impressive setups. Oh, and there is a large list of templates that you can use and grab within the tool itself to jumpstart your process. And if you work as a team, multiple people can work on the same board simultaneously. The visual organization aspect really is a game changer if your brain works like mine. Instead of having ideas scattered everywhere, everything lives in one place where you can see how it all interconnects. That's my complete workflow. That took me from burnt out and quit to consistent weekly uploads. But the real power is in those frameworks that I mentioned, the title templates, the complete YouTube script blueprint, all the worksheets that I use in every single video. If you want access to all of that, sign up for my newsletter or take the two minute credit quiz to identify what part of your channel needs the most attention. Both links are in the description. And I'll send you the title frameworks plus seven other worksheets that will level up your content game. If you want help building a system like this for yourself, that's exactly what we're doing in my 12 week program starting in just under a month. It's my mentorship program with a private community and weekly video calls where we get every single part of your content to good enough and then build the mindset to make it through the valley of death. By the end, you'll have everything you need to succeed on YouTube. If Poppy sounds like a good fit for you, I have a referral link in the description. It helps me out if you use that link. Thank you. Now that you understand my complete AI workflow, you're probably wondering how to actually implement this without burning out like I did. Watch this video next where I break down the strategy, tactics, and mindset that you need to succeed on YouTube.